diverse society um, needs diverse management and diverse opportunities. Opportunity is the essence of fairness and therefore realising that the future. But the country he comes from didn't offer him that so he comes over here and dictates to us about what should and shouldn't occur in Scottish culture and Scottish society as a whole. Common theme of these people. Is, it is self-evident that if one doesn't promote diversity and inclusion you're going to have a society which is unequal, unfair and inefficient. Right then. So that was courtesy of the Scottish government's culture Twitter page as part of their culture strategy that's yet to be unveiled. I've been waiting with bated breath for them to unveil that share of shit as it's rather evident or I've suspected for some time that it's going to be more or less the same nefarious malevolent intentions hidden underneath the sugar-coated rainbow unicorn progressive BS something we've all come to know and love I'm sure but um, this came out the other day Scott's sea culture is not just about theatre and opera reveals new research uh, and another one here new study looks at how culture could be opened up it says down here the trust publishing its results ahead of the Scottish government's first college culture strategy for 20 years says that the policymakers need to recognize the breadth of culture activity however research also highlighted barriers people said they faced when wanting to join culture activities only 25 percent of respondents said there were no barriers to enjoying such activities which is, there isn't essentially if you want to participate and integrate into Scottish society and take part in Scottish cultural activities then you do just that but we know what this is getting at barriers were more commonly cited by younger people 29 percent higher incidence than average those are lower incomes and of course ethnic minorities wow well, fucking shock that is um, new study looks at culture and how it could be opened up uh, Scots take a very broad view of what culture constitutes culture sorry with favorite forms of culture including music food cuisine history sports of a substantial interest also in natural heritage gardening yada yada men are more likely than women to take an interest in sports and games and history while women had a great interest in arts making and crafting etc etc a future culture strategy will therefore need to recognize the breadth of culture activity the greatest barrier to participation is cost following by lack of time, confidence, transport and information. Local cultural provision was rated as good by 48% of the population, 48% good, 15 average, 30 poor, but was lower for women and for members of the ethnic minorities and those in the lowest income brackets. A research found Scots see many additional benefits from cultural activities, including learning, making friends, and creating a better place to live, but they also experience barriers, and these were worse for those on lower incomes and, of course, ethnic minorities, which this is all really about, which I'll come to in just a second. Let's not forget this is the same Scottish government that's been accused on many occasions of failing to promote Scottish culture properly. Yeah, that's right, because there's a common theme littered in around their culture strategy shite that they have publicized to date there seems to be that i've noticed anyway and you may see things a bit differently uh, to myself i've started to realize when you read through the monumental word salads that come out from the scottish government or the un i should say uh, relating to sustainable developments or anything for that matter just page after page after page of paragraphs that really say nothing at all and the same is true for their culture gaff but I've come to notice that there's a, a common theme and it's almost as if they're wanting people to come over here from wherever and their culture their heritage their background to be explored celebrated and promoted but the same is not true for us there seems to be a heavy emphasis on the the people coming over but none on us and it's it kind of underlines the bigger picture in a sense of what's occurring here you know anybody can come to Scotland and be Scottish except Scottish people <laughs> so 
for example, their strategy for Scotland. Yeah, the consultation from last year, or when was it? Uh, yeah, 2019. You know, I'm not going to go through this guff, but recognition of the power of culture in terms of reach and potential number of respondents noted that they were pleased to see culture has taken its place in a national performance framework with a new dedicated national outcome for culture. Suggests that this is a key recognition that culture is not about additional benefit, but is essential to our lives and well-being. The transformative potential of culture was often highlighted, including in terms of the positive impact on individuals, communities and places. There was particular reference to the potential of culture to improve health and well-being some respondents knowing the important role that their own organisation or sector already plays. The importance of excellence was welcomed at reference and vision to the culture of excellence, but while acknowledging the importance of inclusion. Uh huh. There was a view expressed by some respondents that the draft strategy feels quite high level and top down in places that were seen as running counter to other effects of the draft strategy. The focus on inclusion, including support for accessible and community-based culture, was welcomed, as was the emphasis on marginalised communities and social justice. Many acknowledged the complex nature of multiple cultural identities and defining communities. Respondents suggested a range of groups of people who could be given greater coverage in the draft strategy, including ethnic communities, minority ethnic communities, sorry, and British Sign Language users and deaf people including ethnic and black communities. In these cases, the focus was on creating more opportunities for those working or wishing to work in a culture sector. Some respondents noted their agreement with increasing opportunities that broadened the background of those working and volunteering in the culture sectors. The Scottish culture has been expanded and adapting and modernising, you see. <laughs> but why is this all coming out? Why am I talking about this? Well because every time the Scottish government decide to pump something out I have pointed out many occasions that there is method in their madness. In the short term this progressive utopia that these people think they are creating for everybody may very well appear very nice and friendly and numby pamby on paper but as time goes on our culture our country and this goes for every country that's relishing in this shit themselves are going to change forevermore. It's about transforming all of our countries into near enough the same dystopian, uh, opposite of cohesive, if there's a word for that. And above all else, it's about pushing us all in the same direction with centralized power. And I wonder where that power will lie. Well, who's responsible? Who's really responsible for why the Scottish government are pretending that they are looking into how to modernize their culture strategy. Well, of course, it's the United Nations. <laughs> what a belter this one is. From UNESCO.org. Culture in the post-2015 sustainable development agenda. The one size does not fit all model places culture at the center of context-based approaches to sustainable development and improved governance. Mm-hmm. In what way does culture act as an enabler and a driver throughout the sustainable development agenda? How does culture contribute to building capabilities and agency in achieving transformative change? How can culture strengthen the post-2015 agenda and answer the most pressing challenges of the global community? What are the consequences of our post-2015 agenda without culture? Hmm. Culture in the new international development paradigm two years before the end of the Millennium Development Goals, and as the international community takes stock of its achievements in order to agree in the way the post-2015 Sustainable Development Agenda will uh, proceed, it is widely agreed that the development approach followed thus far has reached its limits despite the undoubted progress made. As UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon stated, we cannot continue to burn and consume our way to prosperity as the world's inequalities continue to increase. Dynamic and unpredictable change has been occurring since 2000, and this requires all of us to renew our commitment to tackling existing and emerging challenges. So let me get this straight. If they are referring to non-existent man-made climate change, why do we need to transform or erode effectively our culture and our heritage to make way for a better future, a green future? The future we want for all states that transformative change is required, and that business as usual was no longer an option. UNESCO's Director General, Irina Bokova, 
recently declared that culture is what makes us who we are, it gives us strength, it is a wellspring of innovation and creativity, and it provides answers to many of the challenges we face today. We must do far more to place culture at the heart of the global sustainability agenda. So when the Scottish Government prance about the place and pretend that it's them that's taking the initiative and they're conjuring up these ideas themselves about a culture strategy, just remember who's really behind it. It is never the Scottish Government. I'm really starting to come to the conclusion that the only reason we have a devolved parliament is so that Westminster doesn't have to waste their time destroying Scotland and instead the Scottish Government will do it themselves. Nonetheless, one way of promoting such change is to redefine what we mean by human development. Uh, progress needs to be defined and measured in ways in which account for the broader picture of human development and its context, which emphasises equity, dignity, happiness and sustainability. Culture is regarded as a set of distinctive spiritual, material, intellectual and emotional features of a society or a social group. Uh, understood in the broader sense is a critical consideration when defining the constitute. Uh, constitutive element of well-being, dignity and sustainable, uh, sustainable human development. Word salad, as I said. A further important milestone was in the UN's Conference on Sustainable Development held in 2012, known as the Rio 20 Conference. The outcome document of the conference entitled The Future We Want For All included a number of significant references to culture. It recognised, for example, that many people, especially the poor, depend directly on ecosystems for their livelihoods, their economic, social, physical well-being and their cultural heritage, and that all cultures and civilizations can contribute to sustainable development. I also stressed the need for the conversation as appropriate of the natural cultural heritage of human settlements, the revitalization of historic districts and the rehabilitation of city centres, and emphasised the intrinsic value of biological diversity as well as ecological, genetic, social economic, scientific, educational, cultural, recreational and aesthetic values. Based on the outcomes of this conference, the UN issued a report entitled Realising the Future We Want for All, which sets out the vision for the post-2015 sustainable development agenda, based on three fundamental values of the respect for all rights, human rights, sorry, <laughs> human rights, what a shock, equality, sustainability and the four core dimensions of inclusive social development, inclusive economic development, environmental sustainability, peace and security. The document recognises culture's importance by stating that communities and individuals must be able to create, practice their own culture and enjoy that others are free from fear. Let's see where this is where I was talking about. Be able to create, practice their own culture and enjoy that of others free from fear. Now there's a heavy emphasis on migrants and new Scots and promoting, celebrating and exploring their cultures. But the same is not true for native Scottish people. Because the United Nations, as I've said before, have defined native and or indigenous as groups of people that survived colonialism. Anybody can come to Scotland and be just as Scottish as a Scottish native born Scottish person, sorry. Or an ethnic Scot, something that they seem to have uh, brushed under the rug that it's an ethnicity. It might be somewhat diluted with Anglos and whatnot, but we were a distinct ethnicity historically. Uh, anyway, development po policy professionals have also acknowledged the importance of culture in their work on the ground. While culture was mentioned in fewer than 30% of the UN's development assistance framework at a country level just five years ago, its importance is now underlined in more than 70%. Moreover, the UN Security General's report on cultural development also underscored the work being undertaken on a daily basis by United Nations organisations and agencies. However, despite the advancements, what is still missing is a globally agreed and shared recognition that development programmes and strategies at the global, regional and local level should integrate culture within their goals. Without such actions and the giving of related guidance on human capacity building and the potential of culture to contribute to sustainable development, risks being largely untapped in many regions of the world. Hmm. So, how can culture contribute to the core dimensions of sustainable development as defined in the Realising the Future We Want for All report and ignite transformative change? It is largely anthropological sense. Culture is clearly connected to the fundamental question of how to ensure development that is compatible with the physical limits of the environment of achieving sustainability. It's future and foremost about making appropriate use of the planet's resources, then culture must be at the centre of development strategies. Hmm, how else are you going to reel people in? Since cultures frame relationships among people and society and towards the earth and cosmos, express attitudes to and beliefs in other forms of life, 
whether animal or vegetable, don't pretend that you people give the slightest shit about the earth, the cosmos, animals, or vegetation. You people are the pinnacle of evil as far as I'm concerned. You really are fucking the pinnacle of evil. Indeed, many, indeed, sorry, many societies and belief systems regard nature as being in some sense as an extension of society, making the cultural sense of stewardship of the nature, natural environment an integra integral part of sustainable development. <laughs> yeah, given due consideration to culture is also when it comes to designing and implementing effective development initiatives, regardless of the sector in which these take place. The conclusion to be drawn is that a cultural sensitive approach is an essential enabler of sustainable development and for this reason should be added to human rights, equality and sustainability as an overarching principle underpinning policies of or programmes. At the same time, culture when considered as an economic activity that includes heritage, the arts, the creative industry and enable uh, equitable cultural tourism has an extraordinary and yet largely on top role to play in contributing to the various dimensions of sustainable developments. Inclusive social development is an area where the intrinsic value of culture is often acknowledged, with culture being recognised as providing a sense of belonging and of being a part of a cohesive community. And isn't it funny as the ESMP or any other government for that matter continue to diversify their countries and their culture and whatnot, the less cohesive they become, while at the same time helping people to maintain close links to their roots and to the lands. Same can't be said for Scottish people though, no? Same can't be said for British people for that matter. English, Welsh, Irish, European, Europe for the Europeans, no? While at the same time helping people to maintain close links to the roots of their land, with, with many, uh, which with many identify, especially indigenous people. Well, European people are indigenous to Europe, so. In addition, safeguarding and respecting cultural diversity helps foster an environment that is con conducive to tolerance and mutual understanding and where minorities are acknowledged and society as a whole is more inclusive, stable and resilient. Culture and heritage are also major sources of learning and inspiration and they can act as a spring for creativity which strengthens innovation and entrepreneurship. Uh -huh, is that so? There is no evidence that culture or cultural diversity results in fragmentation or conflict and that some cultures are incompatible or that some cultures are incompatible with sustainable development, human rights or good governance. Culture is not synonymous with static traditions that are frozen in time. Instead, they are very dynamic. Na uh, the very dynamic nature of culture and culture is constantly evolving in relation to the environment and changing societies can act as a driving force that enables people to adapt their values and practices and overcome obstacles and limitations. Indeed, there is no such thing as a fixed or homogenous culture. In abstract terms, there is only someone's culture or some people's culture, which in addition can also be a composite of multiple and diverse influences. The need to incorporate a culture-sensitive and rights-based approach to development has often been advocated by the UN's Permanent Forum on Indigenous Issues, which stresses that the right of Indigenous people to shape their own courses of development should be respected along with their diversity and uniqueness. Such concepts of development should not only be understood as being concerned with natural resource management and the use of land and territory, but instead should embrace a holistic approach that includes sustainable economic growth and the affirmation of social, economic and cultural rights. The land and resources of the world's indigenous people should not be reduced merely to economic assets. Hmm. <laughs> like Europe. As they're also the form, they also form the basis of their social and cultural integrity. Integrity. On the other hand, the lack of reliable statistics in the economies of many indigenous communities, thus failing to recognise the contribution made by the informal economy in many countries, can lead to the sidelining of their livelihoods. With respect to gender equality, don't pretend you care about gender equality. You're promoting feminism because you know feminists are dumb enough to push your agenda. Uh, the dynamic and transformative nature of culture should also be promoted in order to enable women, yes, less babies, whitey, to find paths through which they may view tradition with new eyes in such a way that it will not violate their rights and restore dignity to women and change those traditions which diminish their di dignity, sorry. The inclusion of gender perspectives and analysis of the intersections of culture, conflict, communication and technology can help to accelerate the achievement of sustainable developments. Mm -hmm. Acknowledging cultural diversity should thus not be understood to imply raising bars between communities or genders, but on the contrary, it should be promoting the capabilities of individuals, both men and women, to address poverty. Yeah, okay. Providing a sense of belonging and connectedness and being part of a community and maintaining close links to their roots and their land. These things 
These beings, uh, things with which many people identify, especially indigenous people, fostering an environment conducive to tolerance and mutual understanding in which there is an atmosphere of trust, diversity is acknowledged and respected, minorities and special groups are included, and society as a whole is stable and resilient, offering the possibility of living in a beautiful place and natural environment on a human scale that can be understood and controlled. What? Uh, providing an opportunity to build a cohesive society in which people contribute their time and resources to the general interest as a common good cultural assets and activities for their safeguarding, creation and sharing can provide an ideal entry point for social engagement. Uh, ensuring connections with sources of learning, uh, inspiration and springs for creativity. Ugh, such BS. Finally, common United Nations policies and practices should also be shaped in relation to culture and its importance for sustainable development through joint programming and continu continuing exchange of experiences. So as I said, a big giant word solid for the most part, but you know, there is a pattern emerging as I've said before and there's on occasion, every several paragraphs, there's something of interest for all the wrong reasons. But when the Scottish government talks about a culture strategy, when they start the articles in relation to what needs to change or what the Scots supposedly feel about culture, just remember that the culture strategy is being done to accelerate sustainable developments. Their words, in fact, not mine. Peace. <laughs>